Hello everyone, welcome back to the Nerd Impact Podcast. We're on episode 59, smashing through them, as as I say every week, but it's insane that we're nearly at 60. Um, and this week we're having another music episode and we are looking at the strokes. Um, I will tell you off from the get-go. This is all Nathaniel's wheelhouse. Um, I've only listened <laughs> to a few songs of theirs, but um, I'm sure we'll get into that as we go. But yeah, for any Strokes fans, this is your moment to shine. Come and have a listen and let's go. So Nath, the Strokes, how did you get into them? Where did it all start for you? Yeah, so for me, I mean, the Strokes are massive, right? Like they're easily one of my favorite bands. I mean, they're, 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 they're a very, very famous band. They pretty much, you know, single-handedly revived that sort of almost garage rock uh, in the early 2000s with uh, the absolute classic that is Is This It, their 2001 debut album, which some people think that they may have not topped, but I think uh, 2020's New Abnormal is very, very close to the quality of Is This It in terms of, you know, I mean, Is This It in my eyes is a 10 out of 10 album. Every single song on that album is flawless in my mind and it, you know, no skips whatsoever is the best way of putting it. But um, for me, this, the Strokes, that it was interesting because I, I, they were one of, the, I mean, I literally have it with me, but I forgot to charge it for this episode, is I, you know, my sort of early listing was all through iTunes, right? Like I had the, uh, I remember I inherited my mom's old, uh, very first green iPhone, uh, iPhone, iPod back in the nice. day. So one of the ones we had to, you know, they didn't have any the wheel. backlit screw. Yeah, you had to to, to rotate the wheel. Oh, I mean, the iPod Mini, the fat one. It was it was the the sort of like rounded edge one. Like you could only yeah, get in green, one. green and yeah. pink. The very first iPods you could get. Um, Ironically, it was called an iPod Mini, but it was the furthest thing from Mini. I, I think it, I think it was just called the iPod at first. I think. Was oh, it? okay. I was, it, this was ages ago, but um, I of course evolved from there to the iPod Touch. I, was, I still got the the my first iPod Touch. I've got like a smiggle uh camo sticker oh. on on the back of it but uh yeah so a lot of my music you know was all through itunes um mm. when i first got this ipod touch and one of the first songs that i had on there was uh what you know by uh the two door cinema club which is a massive massive track but also nice. under the cover of darkness by the strokes from their 2011 album angles and now from you know of course i was well, three years old when is this it came out so you know, I wasn't there. I wasn't really, <laughs> I hadn't developed a consciousness by the time, uh, you know, to, to really understand the impact this this album had. And, you know, being there at the time when it released, it must have been, you know, huge, right? Like they, they, they combined so many different sounds and just distilled it into this perfect essence, which, you know, the, it, it's you know, lightning in a bottle, really. But, um, you know, we will discuss through the whole uh, discography as we go on, but I'm um, just sort of providing the general background as you do with these music episodes. But the Strokes are one of my most listened to uh, artists on Spotify easily. You know, they're my, they're just such a comfort listen. They just have so mm. many great tunes and it, it, it they're, they're, they're fantastic. And honestly, when when the new Abnormal were released in 2020, so it came out, I believe in April, 2020. So this was literally at the heart of, well, the very early days of the pandemic, right? That So sort of the UK lockdown, I think from the 23rd of March, 2020. Yeah. And this yeah. came out early April and uh, I'd heard the back in February of 2020, uh, sort of around the time that, um, uh, the, what is it? The, the, the new, the new, um, well, the latest uh, Tame Impala project dropped. They also released uh, At The Door. So they released the music video and so, uh, so single of At The Door. And it was a very, very different sound to the other stuff they'd you know ever released before. It was much more electronic and, and an amazing track. So at the door was sort of the, the middle middle track for the new album, as we'll get to. But I was very excited for the release of this album, and it definitely sort of defined my uh, sort of pandemic time. But as we go through their discography, the best place to start is with "Is This It," which is, I mean, they're, they're, it's a bit of a difficult position to be in, and for a band, I would think, is to have their debut be universally accepted as a masterpiece, mm. right? Like it's. It, 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 I think the shadow of that has maybe led to a lot of conflict in the band as, you know, Julian Casablanca has before, you know, it's been very clear when they're filming uh, angles and such, like they were basically not even in the studio. They were recording this bit separately and it was 
very fraught with tension throughout and you know it didn't even look like we were going to get the new abnormal because there was so much conflict with the band and they also had you know, issues with their label uh, rca and stuff like that so you know it, they've been a band that's sort of fraught with the usual dramas that come with being rock stars i guess but is this it has the iconic cover of uh, the ladies behind uh, uh with it of course there are there is also this sort of censored version which the new abnormal cover does look a lot similar to but uh as you can see in this you know the sort of image if you're watching on youtube um the image i have left the left of me uses the censored version of that album cover rather than uh the more tasteful album cover that i prefer of is this it but this album is it was huge at the time it released i mean again i can't s- confirm that from personal experience but you know, listen, the first time I listened to this was in 2017. So this was properly, uh, when I first properly got in, into the strokes, more than just listening to Angles, was in 2017, in my first year of uni. I, I put on um, uh, Last Night from a, a, a playlist and I was just like, okay, I need to know more of this. Like Last Night is a huge track, one of their biggest. You know, we've got several mm. hundred, hundred million plays, like almost half a billion on Spotify. But it is. I've a- realized I know quite a few of these. I knew I knew mm. the obviously the famous album cover. I knew the the title track. Yeah. Um the, the Modern Age and uh Barely Legal and Last Night. They're all ones I think I've definitely heard throughout the time and oh, you, just you, never uh, never realised. You absolutely will have. Like I mean the, the, they used to play the strokes a lot in one of my favourite uh, nightclubs in, mm. in Edinburgh, the, the liquid rooms on a Friday night. We used to play a lot of indie stuff and that they, they play stuff like last night and that and uh, mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um Good, good times, good times, really. But uh, this album is fucking incredible. It deserves the title of masterpiece. I, be, I believe it's in the top 150 albums of all time on on Rate Your Music, which I believe it should should be higher. But uh, you know, there's so much competition in terms of that. But uh, interestingly enough, as a side note, the new Black Country New Road album actually, I believe, is is almost as high as is this it or on that. So that's uh, just on a very very tangent mode if we're going archie mode on the tangents but uh <laughs> uh it's interesting that rating system anyway but is this it like i said phenomenal tracks it, the opening you know the eponymous track of is this it is an awesome opening it really sets the theme and again i think the only sort of critique i could come up with with this album is that a lot of the songs sound relatively the same is that mm. it's not particularly chameleonic i guess is that they have a sound and they sort of roll with it, but they just make it flawless. It's just a distillation of, of that sort of garage, sort of flawless indie rock, really. It's so superb, and it's such an easy lesson, but so enjoyable. And it, I, I, I don't, I don't I'm, it really just captures an energy, and it, it, it always hard, it makes me feel young. I mean, I'm not, I'm like mm. 24, but it, it just, <laughs> whenever I listen to this, it must be sort of, you know, that as you do with songs, you, you emotionally connect to a time yeah. almost. And it just pulls me back to you know my my first year at uni when I was very out of my depth, very insecure, and it just like it just harkens to that sort of I don't know that that uncertainty and and that that energy of, of of being young and confused really, which I suppose is why it struck like like you know lightning bolt when it released is that it captured that sort of early two thousand sort of almost mm. weird transitional anxiety. But um, I think as well with good indie albums because mm. you know there's there's, no, there's a lot of not great in the albums, <laughs> but yep. they 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 almost are like a it's kind of a space in time where mm, like indie mm. just kind of ruled the charts and yeah I think it does make you kind of go back and reminisce on those days. I mean, I, you know, I've gave these a listen over the last few days in pre- preparation for this, and then mm-hmm. kind of like you said, the, there's not a huge like difference in the sound. Mm-hmm. But that, that didn't deter me. I just we had them on basically on shuffle and was just bopping away to like to the music as I was doing stuff, like as I was, I was doing some work and stuff. And I was like, this is actually really just good feel good music. It's very good background music, and that's not a negative. Mm-hmm. It's just you could put this on and 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 like you you would, people would kind of just be vibing to it. You could play you could play this at like a house party or you know if you've got people over and you just need a bit of background music, you could play this and people would be really like, you know, would probably be like, Oh, what's this? Like, this is really good. And that's what I did. Like certain ones, as I was listening, I was just like, Oh, okay. I quite like this one. I'll just catch the name of that one. Mm-hmm. But yeah. They're, they're, they're a very good feel good kind of vibe band from my initial few listens. Oh, absolutely. Like then, then they're, they're well known for that. They're, again, mm. they have a very particular sort of sound and then they, they, they can make such catchy, catchy songs. Like this is definitely, 
perhaps uh, I, I don't want to sound um, <laughs> uh, very <laughs> pretentious by saying this, but this is definitely the most mainstream band that we've covered so far. Is the best way of yeah. putting it, right? Like, yeah. we're, we're talking you know, 10, 10 million monthly listeners on Spotify. So they're extremely well known. You know, I, when I say the Strokes, people are like, yeah, I know the Strokes. It's not like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, do you, do, <laughs> do you know Daughters or, or stuff like that? Or do you know um, Deftones? I mean, I mean, Deftones are very popular, but I think the Strokes perhaps eclipsed them <laughs> quite significantly. I was going to say, <laughs> the closest band we probably have to this was the Foo Fighters episode. Yeah. Even there, probably not a touch on the Strokes. The Strokes are huge. So, you know, I, again, this is more more accurately less a recommendation episode more me just saying how, how much i enjoy them which is you know i think fair enough but as we go through this album we've got the, the modern age which i love soma which is fucking incredible easily one of the best songs on the album barely legal as well someday which is i mean again these are all 10 out of 10 so it's hard for me to to, to really provide sort of sufficient adjectives to describe how much i appreciate them mm. and love them but someday is amazing. Alone together. Last night, of course, is is just that iconic opening guitar, and just just the energy to it is is it, it, what a, an amazing sort of indie club night banger. Really hard to explain. I, I literally can do the entire uh, like breakdown of that. I, I know it off by heart. Like this is one of the easy ones I sing a lot. Um, but there's New York City Cots, which comes after that, which is. They basically had to, I think they delayed the release of the album or they delayed the release of this song where they're going to rename it because, you know, this released in 2001, mm. very sort of within the time frame of 9-11. So, of course, making a song about New York City cops not exactly being the smartest of individuals was a bit on the nose at the time. So, again, yeah, that that the context of that is 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 interesting and and you know adds adds to it but triangle luck amazing and take it or leave it is such a an amazing way to finish the album like it's it's just banger after banger and it, it deserves that status as masterpiece in my opinion you know definitely up there with stuff like loveless like it's just so good i mean it's maybe not the most musically technically difficult or or, or just insanely experimental or anything like that it's just damn fine indie rock distilled to just a mm. per perfect concoction like every single song works with each other and it's just just a flawless slice of the genre really which you you can't fault it for right like it is what it is on you know it is <laughs> when you, you sort of think is this it well yeah it is right like th this is it it's and it's superb is what it is so I, I i can't find any fault with this album at all really and again you can uh, perhaps understand the struggle the band may have had sort of following up with this say like with room on fire which is their 2003 sort of follow-up is you know they took two years to to sort of you know provide a a follow-up to um is this it and i can imagine the pressure they're under to to to, to release sort of being not a massively well-known band to just hit the zeitgeist like an absolute freight train and then have to continue existing as a band i mean it's, I think there's a huge, huge amount of pressure, yet they, they, the strokes have persisted and continued to deliver. Perhaps not maybe at the same quality. Like, I, I don't, wouldn't say, I mean, maybe Angles and almost certainly The New Abnormal in terms of a full album being as cohesive and and, and just length, if, you know, non-skip at all, no skip mm. for me personally. They still match up to, to Is This It, in my opinion. But I think for a lot of people, they're, they're sort of, you know room on fire and uh um come down machine and first impressions of earth don't necessarily maybe match up to that same level which is which, again must be difficult for them but room on fire the thousands we follow up has you know we mentioned in the guitar hero episode uh it has reptilia yeah. which features on guitar hero um guitar hero 3 which is such a just such amazing high energy track so 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 good Automatic stop, I adore as well. Uh, me, meet me in the bathroom is amazing as, as well. The way it is is awesome. So you know, the, these songs towards they they become slightly more as I say all the time. We cover these, you know, sort of uh, do these music episodes. Is that some albums for me are more f for the singles, right? And automatic yeah. stop, a reptilia are like just they define this uh, this album for me really. Like it's hard to to sort of. Not, not not appreciate the rest but stuff like under control is also amazing 
but it's it's just you know it, the, the singles are so monolithic right like reptilia is you know easily one of the most famous tracks and it's so so good like just just phenomenal and i mean again it's, it's hard to discuss the, the the strokes in any sort of i suppose recommendation way because it, it's huge like so many people you, if if reptilia came on now 90 percent of people would know they'd be like ah i know that song right like it's it's yeah. just huge so i suppose me me saying how good it is is sort of by the by but for me i, I just that energy like it, it was it was back in you know my my first year of uni i was just listening to this from repeat and i'm sure i drove my flatmates nuts by just singing along in the shower because that's that the strokes is definitely one of those bands along with like florence and the machine which you know i i, I whenever i have a shower i will put music on right like i i mm, just yeah you know, it's just how, how I have, like, I've, I've got a Bluetooth speaker, a waterproof one. So I you know, just stick it in the corner and it's just, you just sing along while you, you know, you're showering, shampooing your hair and stuff like that. Like, I like that. So for yeah, me, the strokes, strokes are definitely, you know, a sing in the shower band. But uh, we move on from Room on Fire with First Impressions on Earth, which is, again, probably, I think, their, their worst album in terms of just being not that in, in, enjoyable, I guess it's like latter half really falls off like you've got huge huge singles on this like with you only live once um and on the other side and uh ask me anything but i i mean i don't know it just it, it literally is this album is just you only live once really <laughs> you know it's it's great it is great but I, I i don't hate any of their albums but this is the one i listen to the least and enjoy mm. the least and this, this is, sorry, I haven't provided the date, but this is from 2006. So they waited another three years after Room on Fire to, to release an album, which is, you know, pretty... It's also 14 tracks long, which for any band, really, that's quite a lot of music to put onto an album and that can hinder your experiences. I mean, again, I've not listened to this album, but mm. just looking at it, I'd be like, 14 songs, that's a lot of music to focus on if you're like a enthusiast who goes from song to song on albums. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, <laughs> we've got the the latest Ken Gizzard and the Wizard album, uh, oh, Harkening Back, uh, is an hour and 20 minutes long, uh, <laughs> the latest one. Um, so, I mean, I love, as an assigner, I absolutely fucking adore that, that album. The Dripping Tap, uh, Kepler 22B, um, The Grim Reaper, and um, uh, P- is Persistence is fucking amazing that that whole new album is incredible but still that's an hour and 20 minutes that's a lot to get through and uh you know the first impressions of earth is um 52 minutes so it's not <laughs> massively far off like if you just took out uh the dripping mm. tap they'd basically be the same length so that's that is a lot of music to get through and, and particularly for a band like the strokes where it's more about sort of that snappiness that 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 you know that bit more energy and and, and pep to it uh i don't think it necessarily works to have such a long album but then you they've basically followed that up with 2011's angles which is sort of where i came aware of the strokes so i i first saw the um which i i, I don't know if this this is me showing a bit a bit of age really but i first saw their their video for um under the cover of darkness on mtv in australia i remember i was waiting in a physiotherapist nice. office and they had mtv on and that played and i was like holy shit like this was you know, back in 2011, so I was 12, no, 13. So I, yeah. I, my music taste was not, you know, really developed in any way. Like I still had, you know, SpongeBob music on my, yeah. <laughs> on my iPod. Uh, so, you know, like it, it, the best day ever, actually, the SpongeBob, the best day ever. Uh, okay, I saw like that song. Uh, crack it, cracking album, actually. Um, has some great bangers on that. That would be an interesting one to cover, actually. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but uh, no. Uh, so for me, this was huge. Like undercover darkness, don't go that way. Just, I fucking love it. Such this whole album actually. Like, it took me a while to warm to it because I, I, you know, I sort of revisited the Strokes very heavily, as I said, in my first review mm-hmm. back in 2017. So I went through. Is this it? Fucking loved it. Room on Fire, still pretty awesome with some incredible singles. First impressions of Earth, kind of umdenar about it. But Angles was like, okay, this is where, like, this is another full album where I'm like, okay, I can listen to this straight through. Like, I'm enjoying almost every track on this. Like, it opens with Machu Picchu, which is fucking incredible. Then Under the Cover of Darkness. Two times. Kind of, Undercut. Yeah, you you will know that track. It's so, so good. 
Uh, two times of happiness, two kinds of happiness is also great. You're so right is amazing. Taken for a one. fool, taken for a fool all the time is amazing. Games as well. Or call me back, gratification, metabolism. I love, I love metabolism. This, I want to be outrageous. It's a, a, just a really interesting sentiment. Like you want to be something, but you know, you know, inside you're so plain. Like, I don't know. Mm. I, something about that at the time when I was listening to it, it was like, I resonate with that. But angles is, is, is it, again, one of the defining features of, of the strokes is, of course, Julian Casablanca's insane vocals. You got Albert Hammond Jr.'s amazing guitar work as well. But Julian Casablanca's vocals is, you can just hit you as soon as you know you could just hear it and know who it is because of course he, he uses a particular sort of i believe it's sort of um a form of microphone or a way of distortion where his his he deliberately sounds like he's talking from a distance almost like it's 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 very distinct particularly through is this it almost every track of this this it has some you know, that distinct vocal style and you know on angles as well it's it, it just it just lends something to it and I, it's superb honestly this album for 2011 was just I, I i don't want to say ahead of its time but it was superb and i i still think it is i think it holds up amazingly well and particularly is this it as well like you can go back and listen to is this it and be you won't know that it's from 2000 and one yeah. like we had its 10th anniversary last year in july but you know it's it's kind of crazy like you can it's 20th anniversary 20th, sorry, yeah. Fucking hell, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh. 20th anniversary in, in, yeah. in, in July of last year. God, that is kind of terrifying. But anyway, the, the, the damning passing passage of time aside, uh, this album is fucking amazing. Easily, if you, if you like maybe a bit more electronic sound to it, a bit less of the more just raw, well, not raw, very perfected indie rock sound, and this has a bit more variation and a bit more chameleonic which you, i i think anyone could enjoy really on on angles but uh from there we move to a 2013 come down machine now this is sort of a product of again like i said they had issues with their labels so like the, the cover art of this uh is literally like it says rca and it's it doesn't have like any really any album art it just says the strokes uh come down machine in in, in very sort of distinctly uh normal type right it's designed to they think it was sort of, you know, really like a sort of jab at the label. Like they they had a you know a four I believe five album contract, so this was their final one. So it's like they they're, they're making a point where it's almost like the music is just a a, a product, right? Like it's mm. it's devoid of any sort of passion in it, really. So which is a bit rough, but then again, the the tracks on this are actually really quite amazing, to be honest. For for an album that was sort of just you know made out of obligation almost it's still got amazing tracks so it opens with tap out which is is an amazingly sort of fast guitar all the time is awesome one way trigger and welcome to japan uh 80s come down machine is amazing partners in crime happy ending and call it fate call it karma like to, to, to be an album that like sort of emerged out of you know like i said legal obligation it's still, you know, and again, this was sort of at a time where, where, you know, conflict between the, the band was quite significant. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's amazing, really, this album. The Calm Down Machine is, you know, still f fucking, fucking good, right? Like, not, not as, not as, you know, significantly angular as Angles, but uh, still pretty great. And from there, we, we they didn't release anything until 2016. So again, there's there's a pretty decent gap between each Strokes release. But in 2016, we had only an EP. Uh, so Future, Fre Present, Past. But this, I think, is absolutely insane. It has two of my all-time favorite Strokes songs on it. Drag Queen, not really. But Oblivious and The Threat of Joy are yeah, Threat of Joy is incredible amazing. tracks. Threat of Joy is my absolute all-time favorite strong by, song by The Strokes. Strong by The Strokes. Um, song by The Strokes. It's just unreal to think that they just released, you know, just a four-song LP. I mean, I EP. I mean, I will admit, I absolutely do not like the Oblivious remix by Moretti. Uh, I think it's <laughs> just terrible, absolutely terrible. It's just the song with all the uh, good guitar work ripped off or ripped off it. And I don't it know. It seems like Spotify doesn't like it either. Yeah, it's 
disgustingly <laughs> low plays. It is not very good. You go from Threat of Joy to like their best song. Like I sing along to Threat of Joy all the time. I love this song. I cannot get enough of it and I will always enjoy listening to it. It's it's for me it's just do 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 I don't know. It just hits all the buttons that I want from a stroke song and I think it's just hasn't been topped. But that was in 2016. So we only really got an EP. So between twenty twenty between there's seven years between Come Down Machine and the new Abnormal, the latest album. So that's you know, that's a long, long time. And a lot of people didn't think we were ever gonna get another Strokes album. So when uh, At the Door dropped and you know, we got a taste of the new direction of the Strokes, I was very excited. I really, really, as I said before in, in this podcast, I really did enjoy At the Door as a single. Very different, quite a long song but still really, really great. It's not my favorite off that album, as we'll get to, is the new Abnormals, their, their latest release and their next album after their EP. But I don't know. I I, I, I think they just blew it out the park with the new Abnormal. Is that when I, 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 literally, I remember I was, again, this was in the pandemic, so there wasn't much I could do. So I would, I would basically sort of run up Arthur's seat, which is just a big, big hill in Edinburgh, which was just by my student accommodation. And so I, I, you know, as I couldn't go to the gym or anything like that. So my, as you were, your government mandated exercise was to go out <laughs> and walk. So I would, I would run up Arthur's seat. And I remember I was walking out past um, Hollywood House and I put on this album for the first time. And just hearing that that first beat of the adults are talking, I was like, holy shit, I know this is going to be fucking amazing. And the adults are talking is just an insane opener for this album. Like, Oh man, it's just got some this pace, this punch to it, which is just incomparable. Like this whole album really, really blew me away. Honestly, it's a very it's not the same sort of you know style or sound as is this it, but it just has this this energy to it. And Julian Casablancas goes mental with the vocals and um, and the lyrics in this album. Like uh, he, he was just such a high point on. Uh, the adults are talking, but from there we go to Selfless, which is also an amazing track. Brooklyn, like Bridge, Brooklyn Bridge to Chorus. And then we've got uh, the sort of Billy Joel, um, Billy, sorry, Billy Idol inter- interpolation of um, Dancing by Myself with Bad Decisions, which is a bit on the nose. I, I'm surprised they managed to actually get, get it cleared because it's very pretty much identical almost, but I suppose that's really the point. But um, Bad Decisions is has grown on me. I didn't like it at first, but it has definitely grown on me. And then Eternal Summer, I think, is is a bit of a low point on the album. It's just, you get some weird, weird points of vocals from Julian, a lot of high points. And it's, it's I don't know, it's, it's my least favorite song on the album. But like I said, At The Door is incredible. And then you, you, you end, you just end this album with these three perfect tracks. Why are Sunday so depressing? Not the same anymore. An ode to the Mets. And they just, they're a bit slower, but they just have this lyrical energy that not, not the same anymore is again, super high up on there on my list of stroke songs, super high up. I really, really love this. This is for almost the entire summer of 2020. This was my go-to like sing along song. You know, I'm sure my mom was sick of hearing it played in the car when we were, um, when you're renovating our old house, but, uh, I just play this all the time and I still do, but it's, this is when I start putting that on, like it, just hearing the ding, 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 ding. It just immediately makes me feel of summer again. And it's, it's this, this, this was really one of my pandemic albums. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a weird thing to say, but for the early days of the pandemic, this is what I was listening to every day all, you know, all day pretty much was the new abnormal. So, you know, the strokes were a very defining part of my university experience and, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see where they go from this because, again, you know, two years, the new abnormal has been extremely well received. Like, again, it's like a re- return to form by the strokes. Like, there are, you know, people that might not like some of it. And, I'm, you know, like myself, Eternal Summer isn't necessarily for me. And it's, I wouldn't say it's almost at the same point of, is this it? But the songs on here are still so, so good. So, so good. And I, I'm, again, running out of adjectives to to accurately describe it. But, yeah, I mean that's sort of their whole discography. Then it's uh, again less of a um, uh, King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard. 
uh, mm. approach is that did take a very long time to get through all of their their albums but the strokes hugely massive band and they deserve to be really is that there, there's as you said there there is a lot of shit indie rock out there and that's you know sometimes the strokes <laughs> step into that territory but when when they're at the peak of their game they are mm. you know incomparable really absolutely incomparable. i think i'll definitely listen to a bit more of the new abnormal solely because mm-hmm. like i said they're all on shuffle but i think i'm going to probably give that a go because some of the ones off there are the ones that i kind of looked and liked so mm-hmm. um yeah I'm, I'm excited to venture into a bit more of the strokes um you know like i said i've i, I know more than i thought yeah, which is you know which it's is cool but i, I want to pay more attention to them now um you know this is one of the best things about our podcast is we are constantly introducing each other to new music you know mm. we don't always do episodes that we both know the bands for um we will but then there's other ones where we both just have something we really want to talk about um it's been really nice hearing about your love for the strokes um <laughs> have you got any final thoughts before we we bow out no of course this is you know a lot of people have a lot of different thoughts on the strokes and i'd love to hear them you know but for me they're an absolute defining band in my music taste and you know i i will have amount to no shame in saying how much i adore them and, and continue to enjoy their music but i'm just interested to see where they go from here but you know tell you know, let me know your, your your favorite album of the strokes or your favorite song but uh again just in, in they are a massive band so i i, I would like to hear you know we're more like hopefully we're more likely to get at least some person's response to it rather mm. than, uh, you know, th- vague threats of violence uh, as, <laughs> as the Death Grips community is, is wont to do. But uh, that is why I appreciate them. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. And, uh, yeah, let me, let me know what your, or let us know what your favorite uh, Stroke song or album is. And, yeah, hopefully catch us for the next episode.